lovely to meet you. Yes, how are you? I am good. We have uh, an interesting bunch of questions um, lined up for you, and I think the first one um, kind of starts off with the question Nina had put to us uh, about the situation around the world. Mm -hmm. um, we're all competing for who's got it worse. So in this kind <laughs> of environment, uh, what do you do when, when you're looking at investments around the world? Do you worry? Do you say, eh, it'll be fine? No well, let me, uh, first of all, tell you that I hope that Canada will be the best, <laughs> not the worst. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and um, by the way, it's an amazing uh, group of people. I was uh, listening to all of you uh, backstage and uh, well, it's uh, quite a, a powerful group of, uh, of people. I'm very uh, pleased to be with all of you. When I look at the situation, uh, you know, on a global basis, first of all, we need to recognize that the global economy is slowing down and that essentially uh, you can go into a lot of details, but there are two important uh, trends. The first is certainly uh, trade conflicts and geopolitical tensions around the world. And uh, it's very, very difficult to predict the way it will go. It will depend the way some presidents will uh, wake up in the morning and decide the way it will go that day. Uh, so it's, no, but th th that's the reality, unfortunately. Uh, when I look at Canada, uh, to a certain extent, I feel a little bit more comfortable. I hope that we will not be going into that trend of populisms and uh, protectionisms. Uh, I hope that we will continue to be a very open uh, country, inclusive country, uh, innovative country, compared to, unfortunately, the trends that we can see right now in Europe with the Brexit, uh, the tension in the US with China. So uh, that's... Uh, from an investment point of view, that's, uh, that's not easy. And that's I guess not easy. That's so where do easy. you put your money in an environment like this if you're sitting in Canada and saying, hmm, um, where do I attract people to invest in my country? Do I put it in innovation? Do I put it in AI? Do I put it in um, natural resources? Where, where is the target for you? Well, um, I think that when I look at it, uh, I like very much the Canadian story. Uh, and the reason is, uh, I guess, uh, you know, this is a country where we have uh, important natural resources, um, energy, which is important, water, we have uh, educated people, a reasonable system for innovation. So when I look at it from an investment point of view compared to other countries, and I have the privilege to travel a little bit, you know, I like, you know, my Canadian story and I like my, you know, Canadian, uh, I would say, uh, context to, in, uh, to invest. However, uh, I guess that, um, uh, you know, uh, I, would, I would certainly suggest uh, to uh, consider, you know, alternative investments uh, because when we look at, you know, traditional fixed income uh, um, opportunities or even equities, we need to make sure to have a very well diversified portfolio. And by the way, that's you know what I'm doing myself. So looking at Canada first, yeah. but looking also at the world. I do want to ask uh, all of you, this is our opportunity to ask Monique our questions. So if anyone has a question, do raise your hand and our mic handlers will come to you. So at this point, I just want to go back to Monique with a question of my own, but do raise your hand if you have a question, I'll come straight to you. Um, let's talk about competitiveness. What are the issues that we're looking at when we're looking at Canadian businesses versus other, other countries in the Americas? Yes. Yeah. We're not even gonna go as far as Europe at this point. So when we look at Canada versus not just the US, but Latin America, South America, where does Canada stand and where does it fail? Well, even though I'm a fan, I'm a fan of Canada, as I said, uh, there are things that we need to do better. And I think that um, right now when we look at the economy, the, the economy is doing well, and, and mostly because there is a positive uh, consumer uh, confidence level into the economy, and that the, label, the labor trend uh, is, is also quite positive. 
However, when we compare Canada to the United States, um, unfortunately, we are not as productive, not as innovative, not as entrepreneurial. So I think that, uh, and, and the level of business investment is not as uh, significant. So I guess that when I look at our country and uh, when I look forward in terms of what we can do to improve, to improve the competitiveness of the Canadian economy, it is certainly to work and do better in terms of those uh, three uh, elements. So productivity, yeah. business investment, and innovation. But do you think that last bit, in, in terms of innovation, there's been a lot of criticism that not enough investments are going into things like artificial intelligence in Canada. Do you agree with that analysis? Uh, I would say yes and no. I think that uh, you know we are doing, uh, depending where you are talking about in the country, we are doing well. If I think about some clusters in Montreal, for example, if I look at what's going on in Toronto, they are very interesting initiative. Uh, can we do better? Probably so, uh, compared to the US. Uh, there is also in the US a very strong defense sector that we don't have per se in Canada. It makes a very big difference. Um, so I would say that uh, I'm happy about the momentum, but can we do more? No doubt about it. Now, uh, there are some issues regarding artificial intelligence and some of those things uh, in terms of uh, new developments in the, you know, the technology and the, que the question of data protection and so forth. Mm. And I think that in parallel that we do more, we need to also increase the level of work that we do in terms of ethical ethical conducts, uh, because, you know, there was an article, I guess, two, three weeks ago in The Economist uh, talking about artificial intelligence in warfare, and when you read those articles, you know, you start to be a little bit nervous about the state of the world, uh, because you realize that, you know, something could happen, you know, some machine could decide, you know, to launch something somewhere in the world without having the usual check and balance that you have with people. So, you know, you need to make sure that in parallel that you increase the level of investments that you do in that artificial intelligence. That Are you doing time, that with Investment Quebec? Are you bumping in the money into that, in that direction? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, uh, uh, I, I guess that the federal government, but also the Quebec government was very um, uh, keen in investing into the cluster that we have in Montreal. Uh, there are some interesting initiatives, but still uh, some work to make sure that we can uh, do something meaningful with it. Well, we have a question. From the chair of MPW International. I wasn't Nina about to Easton. say that. Sorry. Um, <laughs> Monique, thank you for being here. Um, could you describe how Canadian relation, the economic relationship with China, has sh changed, changed and shifted as the U.S.'s re economic relationship with China has shifted? Well, that's a very future? interesting uh, question because uh, if you look at the history of our country, uh, Canada was one of the first country to have. Uh, uh, official relationships with uh, with China, and and I guess that many prime ministers were able over the history to get some ongoing positive relationship with China, and of course with uh, what's going on with you know the conflicts between the U.S. and China, it's much more delicate and complicated, and that's that's a big issue in my mind. Uh, we need to recognize that we have some important Canadian values, but at the same time, we need to recognize that we need to diversify our trade partners around the world, and China is certainly an important country for us. Uh, one important aspect, uh, I hope that Dominic Barton, uh, who is the new ambassador, uh, you know, uh, from Canada to China, uh, highly experienced person with large connections around the world, large connection with China will be able to help a little bit to resolve this kind of uh, very uh, intense situation. Do we have any other questions from the room? Right there. No, oh, there's a mic coming. 
loud question. Um, thanks, Monique. It's good to see you again. Uh, Marcia Moffat from BlackRock. One question that I would have, and I think this relates to your role as, uh, because you have a particular uh, bird's eye view as chair of investment uh, yes. Quebec. Um, you know, and, and, and this will be more relevant to my Canadian colleagues in the room than, than the U.S., but maybe it'll resonate for uh, the U.S. colleagues as well, is I, I, I look at um, Canada as being a small country, not geographically, but in terms of number of people, um, and I wonder uh, uh, what you think the opportunities are for us to get some scale behind some initiatives as a country um, with a less regional approach, if you will. And, you know, and I think that could be, uh, it, the same is true in other countries where we splinter uh, into these smaller groups and then we're not really accomplishing the big, exciting yeah. uh, opportunities. Well, uh, very, uh, Europe. Yeah, very interesting. Uh, I think that one of the risks uh, that we are facing in Canada, and we need to be very careful about that, uh, and we are not isolated, uh, you know, from the big trends around populisms uh, around the world, is that we need to make sure that we keep the unity of the country. We need to keep the country together uh, from a political point of view. Uh, so far, you know, we've been able to do that. We had some conversations, of course, between Quebec and the other part of Canada, but we've been able to do that with respect and we were able to progress in that journey and I hope that it will be the same thing going forward with some of the issues that I'm uh, listening to from the western part of Canada. I hope that we can keep things together. I think that from a pure economic point of view, there are a lot of, for, of opportunities to do more trade across this country. We have provincial barriers that, you know, doesn't make sense anymore, so we will need to correct that and adjust that. Um, and to a certain extent, I guess that I'm not uncomfortable with this kind of uh, middle power country, so we are not as huge as the US, we have to deal with a huge partner, uh, and, and in fact with, of course, the change in directions coming in the US that we had to manage with when it was time to renegotiate NAFTA, I I think that we were able to do it right, and I think that Canada should continue on the global scene to, uh, to be, uh, I would say, a country of, you know, inclusivity, a country where we respect people, and a country where we have so strong social values. And hopefully this is something that will keep the country together. How much does business end up playing a role in bringing that to fruition because you're seeing the same issues in Europe as well um, where businesses seem to be taking this on as almost a purpose, a cause and yeah. some of it w would be woke washing and some of it is actually a reality of out of, born out of necessity for talent. Um, well, personally, uh, I, uh, I am a very strong believer in the fact that business is there uh, to create value, not just for shareholders, not just for the economy, but for society. And when you look at some of the highly successful corporations with, you know, a long history of success, you will see that those companies have a very balanced way to deal with their responsibilities, but also most of the time have a purpose. And I found very interesting this evolution in the U.S. of the U.S. Uh, business roundtable uh, to move from that, you know, focus on shareholders to stakeholders. And I feel comfortable with that because as the former chair of the board and CEO of Desjardins, when I was thinking about the strategy of the organization, when I was thinking about the future of the organization, it was about Customers, of course, members for us, but customers, if you are not aligned with your customers today and tomorrow, if you are not able to understand the evolution of the customers going forward, you will not be anymore in business. So sometimes you need to adjust and you need to invest into the future to make sure that your customers, you know, will be getting value from your organization. Employees. It has to be there because the success of an organization is people. 
without people, you know, you don't have a business. So by definition, I feel comfortable with that. And the best ideas, the best strategy will come to friction at the condition that you will be able to implement. And you implement how? With people, your employees, by the way. Uh, this connection with suppliers, suppliers are very, um, you know, are essentially partners of your organization, so it makes, you know, a lot of sense to include them. Communities, it makes sense also, and eventually uh, shareholders. So in which order you need to position all of that, some people will start with shareholders, and I know that there are some debates. There was a very interesting article in The Economist, I think it was last week, about keep quoting the fact editors. that, yeah, yeah, well, I, I know, but you know, I'm, I, I'm a they fan of that, uh, of that magazine, I have to admit, but the point is that there, there was a very strong argument against this position of the US uh, Business Roundtable, but personally, I feel comfortable even though I have to admit that it is a little bit unclear to me how you want to define a company with a purpose. That's not easy, and we had a few minutes uh, before this uh, session, a small round table talking about that. When you think about it, how to define a company with a purpose is not something easy to do. You can define a company with, uh, you know, an appropriate uh, corporate responsibility approach, but defining a company with a purpose is something much more demanding, in my view. Well, it's a lot of respect. It sounds a bit like writing uh, a piece of music, and I know that your background yeah. as a musician helps you to almost look at your companies and, and the businesses you deal with almost like an orchestra. So how it is. It is, in fact. It how is. do you? How how does how has that entire life journey really helped you to figure out, you know, what is critically important at a, at a level of a Desjardins or at uh, Investment Quebec, or if, if you're looking at Canada as a whole, or in the companies that you're going to and advising or investing in? How do you draw that perfect musical piece together? What do you put first and second and third? <laughs> well, my background in music and arts is uh, very important to me. It, uh, it gave me, uh, I guess, uh, when I was very young, a, question, uh, a sense of uh, discipline, rigor, but also being comfortable with emotion, and emotion is about people. Um, so I realized very quickly that uh, when I was with different organizations, and that when you want to bring people to, uh, I guess, to realize or to execute the strategy, it's, it's about bringing some sort of positive emotion, positive energy, and it's like a little bit like conducting an orchestra. It's very, very similar, or it's like playing music with a lot of people. And at the end of the day, uh, I guess that I was able from time to time to bring a little bit of that experience, musical experience into what I was doing, bring people into one direction with not one voice, very different voices, but at the same time with the same song or the same uh, kind of music. And that's, uh, you know, what you need to do with large organization if you want to be successful. If you had to think about um, the current political situation in Canada, and you had to put that into a piece of music. Uh, would you say that this election is going to be well in tune? It's going to end up with a beautiful piece of Mozart-style music, or uh, it's, is it going to be more underground? Where would you go with this? <laughs> you know what? That's a really good question. <laughs> <laughs> Thinking about the election uh, from a you know music point of view, uh, well, uh, it is certainly maybe something like you know a, a, a very long symphony. <laughs> there will be some emotion in the middle, but hopefully at the end we will be uh, going with uh, de la joie. So hopefully, <laughs> at the end of the day, we will be able to keep the country in the right direction and not keeping your, not, nothing's keeping you awake at night, worried? Uh, 
I'm a little bit, as I said, worried about the fact that you know there could be uh, a trend to some populism into the uh, campaign, and I don't think that this is something that could contribute to uh, the well-being of the country. Uh, so hopefully, the typical Canadian well-balanced style, more to the center, will you know will be the result of this election. So my last question to you, and you can answer in one line, one word, however you want. Yeah. Um, I was told by friends of mine um, in Quebec that there was a lot of chatter about you thinking about a political uh, role in Canada. Is that true or is that just gossip? Let me think about it. <laughs> <laughs> that couldn't be a nicer answer to that question. Monique, thank you so very much for giving thank us your so insight. Thank you so much.